Hello, Devan. So today I'm going to talk about gender dysphoria. Gender dysphoria means that a person is not happy with their biological gender. Okay. So um, suppose you get a patient in an exam and the patient says that I'm not happy with my biological gender. I want to change my gender. So this is not a, a common medicine or surgical type station where you can uh, ask about symptoms and then uh, do your differential diagnosis and rule out the red flags and then ask about family history and so on, okay? This is quite a unique scenario, quite a unique situation, and many people uh, really find it quite difficult to talk about this. So I'm today I'm going to tell you how to take the history in such situations and what are the important points from psychological point of view which make the diagnosis of gender dysphoria and how are we going to manage this patient. So the first point that I really want to stress here is that uh, whatever your beliefs are about um, LGBTQ or gender dysphoria or things like that, the first and the most important thing is to stay non-judgmental, okay? All right, so starting from history, there are about five specific points that you need to touch on in the history, all right? So the first thing is whenever a patient comes to us with a symptom, uh, the first question that we ask is since when are they... Uh, feeling this all right so this would be your first question here as well all right you will ask about life history you will ask them how long have you been thinking about this okay how long have you been thinking about this and what have you done so far in terms of changing your gender so these first two questions are like any other medical condition we always ask the patient so since when have you had uh, since when um have you been feeling like this and what have you done so far all right so you will ask these two uh, questions. Then you will ask them, have you started any steps toward changing your gender? Have you seen any doctors about this in the past? And have you spoken to anyone in the school for support? So all these questions will give you an idea. And since when uh, has, the, has this been going on and whether this person has uh, spoken to someone else or you are the first person that this uh, patient has come up to, all right? Okay. Uh, so then we are going to uh, go toward confirming our diagnosis. So the um, most important two steps that are uh, essential for the diagnosis of gender dysphoria are to ask about references and perceptions. These are the two things that make a diagnosis of gender dysphoria. But people all the time uh, forget about asking these questions, all right? So preferences means uh, what would the patient prefer in terms of dressing? Would they like to dress like a boy or would they like to dress like a girl? What are their preferences in terms of using facilities? Would you would, would they like to go to female facilities or um, male facilities? Okay. What are their preferences in terms of relationships? Would they like to be in a relationship with a boy or a girl? Okay. So these are preferences. So you need to ask about at least three types of preferences. Number one is dressing preference. Number two is preference in using facilities. And number third is relationship preference. And then you have to ask about perception. Perception means that how do they perceive their body? Okay, so you need to ask them what do you feel in terms of your body parts or hair distribution, okay? And then you need to ask, how do you feel about menstruation if, they, if the patient is female, okay? The first question you need to ask both from the male patient and the female patient, that how they, do they feel in, term, in terms of their body parts, male and female body parts in male or female hair distribution. And then if the patient is female, then you also need to ask about menstruation. So these two questions are very, uh, you can see why they are important for the diagnosis of gender dysphoria. For example, if you get a girl and she says, uh, when you ask about preferences, uh, she says, I like to dress as a boy. I want to use uh, male facilities and I want to be in a relationship with a girl. Okay. And when you ask about preferences, she says she doesn't like her body form. She doesn't like her hair distribution. And she's totally grasped out uh, by the menstruation and she wants it to stop. So you have your diagnosis there that she has uh, gender dysphoria. The next two questions are basically psychosocial. So we need to find out the patient's psychological support. Uh, so you need to ask them about their positives and negatives. How is their support system? Does their family know? 
um, what was their response to date? Are they supportive? Are their friends supportive? And negative is, have they experienced anything negative? Have they experienced anything? Um, have they experienced any bullying because of their um, condition? Okay. And then, uh, because it's quite a, um, it's quite a tough situation for the patient as well. And you might be the first person that the person has come up to. And you might be the first person that he's speaking about this to. And he might have negative experiences like bullying by, by their uh, fellow students or colleagues, stuff like that. So you need to know about their psychological situation. You need to ask them that um, this has been going for a long, long time now. How has it affected your mood? Okay. You need to ask them, do you have any fear or anxiety? Okay. Do you have any fear or anxiety? is also another form of asking them, do you have any concerns? Okay. All right. So in terms of examination, we do not need to examine this patient. So no examination is required here. Um, so after examination, after our history and examination, the next part is explaining the, our diagnosis to the patient. So we need to expo explain to the patient what gender dysphoria is. So you can uh, explain in these words that I have written that it is the distressed experience by an individual about their assigned gender. They feel like they're incomplete in the body that they're born with, okay? So uh, you need to explain it to them. And then um, we will come to the management part. So the management here is referral. The patient has presented to the primary care. So you can not do anything. In the primary care, this patient needs to be diagnosed by a psychiatrist. So, um, the patient, if the patient is under 18, we will refer the patient to um, child and adolescent mental health services. This is what CAMS mean. Okay, child and adolescent mental health services. You will refer the patient there and uh, they would be the one to diagnose the patient and they will also give psychological support to the patient while they are trying to diagnose uh, him or her okay once the once the diagnosis is confirmed then they will start them on treatment in specialist centers and the treatment would include um number one is psychological support number two is hormonal treatment and they might do surgery in some cases it will vary from um person to person and it will be a uh, Specialist will, would be the one deciding these treatments. So you just need to like give sort of an overview to the patient that these are uh, some possible treatments that they might start you on once they diagnose you. Okay. And um, in the end, you can just um, ask, you can just tell them that um, there are some supports, or there are some support services for gender dysphoria. There is a website called TransWiki and you can uh, have a look at that. So that was basically all about the gender dysphoria station. Uh, be sure to never forget about asking about preferences and perception. Okay.